Captain, I'm receiving an urgent docking request from another vessel. Greetings from the Halcyon Parcel Service. Delivery is guaranteed within standard margins of certainty. I've got a special delivery for Alex Hawthorne of The Unreliable. Uh, with your permission, I'll see it transferred to your ship. It's a parcel, sir. This is the Halcyon Parcel Service. We don't deal in packages. With alacrity. Stand by, Captain Hawthorne. An HPS certified distribution technician has deposited the parcel into your cargo hold in accordance with hazardous waste disposal procedures. They dispense three complimentary spritzes of Anti Cleo's Citrus Squirt Air Freshener. That's the HPS touch for you, Captain Hawthorne. On behalf of HPS, I'd like to remind you that HPS is not responsible for any damage, defacement, or unseemliness to your parcel. Thank you for your patience, and please remember HPS for all of your future parcel-related needs. The bottles of Raptodyne Musk. One has broken. Hawthorne, I'm forgetting this. Something's happening. Got mixed up in some shady business on Gorgon. Should have known better. But I landed on something big. And now this job's an itch I can't stop scratching. There's a whole research compound left to the Sprats. I think I'm close to figuring out why. But something dangerous is closer to me. Got the job through one mini Ambrose. Top runger who just came into some money was offering a hefty bit card for qualified help. Trust me. Her money's good. Talk to Minnie. Take the job. If I ain't gonna live to see the payday, might as well be you. Consider us even, old pal. Well, that fellow certainly seemed trustworthy. I've gotten jobs from some unusual sources, but this is a first. Congratulations, Captain. I don't mean to sound prim, Captain, but there's gotta be a better way to ask someone to do you a favor. I just want to say, we gotta take this job. This is the closest I ever been to starring in a serial drama. Only thing we're missing is a couple cameras and a soundtrack. At least this won't be boring. Lucky Montoya owed Captain Hawthorne a considerable debt. I believe this is what humans refer to as payback. Captain? The message contains landing coordinates for a small asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. It was recently registered to a Wilhelmina Ambrose. Now, I, for one, was hoping to do the exact opposite of that. What? Do you want to shake its hand? Yeah, can we talk about the arm? I want to take bets on how the guy lost it. My money's on cannibals. That ain't really that fellow's arm, right? It's gotta be a dummy. Or a toy? Well, I'm not cleaning it up. Clean up service request processed. Disposal of human arm from the Unreliable's cargo hold will commence in the immediate future. Simulating disgust. How distasteful. Humans eat there. I'm not touching it. Etc. Lucky Montoya had a statistically significant tendency to encounter situations of extreme danger. Oh, really? I thought he lost his arm gambling. He was also the fourth best paid freelancer in the system. There are several hundred freelancers operating in Halcyon. Considering the numbers, Mr. Montoya ranked among the top percentile. This had less correlation with his measured aptitudes, which rank at or below average, than with a pattern of fortunate circumstances. Luck does not exist, Captain. Nevertheless, I am programmed to agree with your assessment. 
I have transferred the coordinates for Ambrose Manor to your navigation terminal. We can travel there when you are ready. Hawthorne, if you're getting this, something's happened to me. Got mixed up in some shady business on Gorgon. Should have known better. But I landed on something big. And now this job's an itch I can't stop scratching. There's a whole research compound left of the Sprats. I think I'm close to figuring out why. But something dangerous is closer to me. Got the job through one mini Ambrose. Top runger who just came into some money and was offering a hefty bit card for qualified help. Trust me, her money's good. Talk to Minnie. Take the job. If I ain't gonna live to see the payday, might as well be you. Consider us even, old pal. Welcome to Ambrose Manor. We were not expecting company. Please follow. Do not stray from the path. Well, we're not known for going where we're told, but we'll see what we can do. Oh no, we should check to see he's alright. I've never seen a more effective argument against blindly following a preordained plan. Those big empty windows. It feels like the building's watching me. Oh, law, I'm getting goosebumps. People will go to extraordinary lengths to define themselves, won't they? This is just a facade to hide behind. Something here don't feel right. This place has the distinct feeling of a crypt. Huh? Apparently not. Don't join me for a drink, Mr. Whoever you are. So who the devil are you? You don't say. Well, make yourself at home, Captain. I'm sure we have much to discuss. Do you see that glowing chunk of space rock? That's Gorgon. My birthright, my burden, and the bane of my existence. I hate to drink alone, and this is my third. So join me in raising a glass to Gorgon. That's right. The Gorgon asteroid is pretty to look at, but evil to the core. I raise a glass to my adversary out of respect. That's right. And I take it you're the type who skips formalities, so let's get down to business. Now what brings you to my house, handsome? I take it you didn't come all this way for the beverages, the starry skies, or the pleasant company. A severed arm. How positively ghoulish. You know this is a private residence, not a curio shop. Really? Huh. 
Now this severed limb, did it have dark hair? Rugged knuckles? Chewed fingernails? A gunslinger's calluses? Aha! Mystery solved. I can only think of one man daring enough to jettison his extremities on my behalf. Lucky Montoya is my personal freelancer. Fascinating man. Very brooding and theatrical. Always staring into space and twirling a bullet over his knuckles. The more lost we feel, the more we put on a show for others. But if something happened to him... Oh dear. I suppose that makes him my former freelancer now? You suspect foul play? Interesting. If we're being honest, I haven't given it much thought. What a time for his luck to run out. We were in the middle of something grand, and I really can't afford another setback. Funny that you should bring that up. How would you like to be my new freelancer? There's been a recent vacancy, and I think you're well suited to the job. You offer work to everyone who breaks into your home? Must be some kind of Byzantine tradition I ain't know about. I don't believe you thought this through. Or much else, for that matter. I'm looking for someone rough around the edges. A gorgeous, dashing scoundrel type. Incidentally, someone good with their hands. My mother, Dr. Olivia Ambrose, worked for Spacer's Choice at the Gorgon Research Facility. She was brilliant. The top scientist in her field. Until tragedy struck. One day, Spacer's Choice shut down all research and evacuated Gorgon. Everyone had to scramble or risk getting left behind. It was chaos. Employees fled for their lives. Mother... never made it home. I'm told she wasn't the only casualty that fateful day. It must have been real hard on you, losing your mother all of a sudden like that. I'm sorry to hear it, ma'am. Thank you. Ambrose ladies are supposed to be resilient to the unexpected, but... this was especially hard on me. Mother's name has since been dragged through the mud. Spacer's Choice blames her for the collapse of Project Gorgon, and I just know they're lying. Everything you can imagine and more. Dereliction of duty, circulating anti-corporate memos, taking longer than average coffee breaks. The list goes on. Mother would not have allowed Project Gorgon to fail. Something happened on that asteroid, and my family took the fall for it. The truth. Mother is gone, Gorgon is silent, and I deserve answers. That will depend on what we learn. The scope of this cover-up is enormous. Whatever Spacer's Choice is hiding could bring ruin down on their heads. Or it could just be another dead end. We won't know till we look, will we? I admired Mother, but we weren't close. She disapproved of... everything about me, really. I couldn't measure up to her example. She didn't make time for us. I remember thinking that she never wanted a child, and never forgave me for being one. Naive and irresponsible as I was. Maybe so, Captain, but... I can't help feeling family should come first. Else, what are we working for? Mother worked herself to the bone. She wanted to make the colony a better place. No matter who or what got sacrificed along the way. She never spared a thought for those of us who cherished her, who suffered for her idea of progress.
We got close once. When I was a child, I enjoyed looking over Mother's shoulder, playing backseat chemist while she peered into a microscope. One day, she told me to leave before I broke something. Then, I got mad and broke something. Typical night in the Ambrose house. Oh, that hurts my heart to hear, ma'am. My dad was real dedicated to his work, too, but he always let me help. Made me feel, I don't know, special. Like I had something to offer. I wish you could have had that with your mother. Mother and Gorgon were made for each other. I had the misfortune to be stuck in the middle. I don't know. And Spacer's Choice won't say. They don't discuss anything that tarnishes their brand. Gorgon has a dark history. The project fell apart. Personnel were shuffled across the system. With Mother gone, now I'm all that's left. No doubt someone is out there who could talk. Someone involved in Mother's research. Someone paid for their discretion. Then again, why pay for silence when you can buy it for the low, low cost of a bullet? That's the Spacer's Choice way. The asteroid may look like a glittering jewel, but I assure you the resemblance ends there. Gorgon is poisonous to the core. One might even say cursed. I need your help, Captain. Project Gorgon killed Mother and disgraced the Ambrose name, and no one has been held accountable. Spacer's Choice buried the past like a dirty secret. Neither. It's vindication I want. Whatever happened on Gorgon wasn't Mother's fault. I simply need the evidence to prove it. We're going to drag the truth, kicking and screaming into the light. Even if it means bringing ruin and humiliation to Spacer's Choice. All the evidence I need should be in Mother's journal. You can find it in her office on Gorgon, in the heart of the old research facility. I'm not surprised. Between the family drama and the corporate conspiracy, it must feel like you've stepped on a landmine. Speak freely, Captain. I suspect it will prove that corporate greed and incompetence were to blame for the calamity at Gorgon, and not Mother. Mother was a brilliant woman. Difficult, cold, unreachable even, but brilliant. Spacer's Choice evacuated in a hurry, leaving a fortune's worth of equipment in their wake. Mother's journal would have escaped their notice. This is my last hope of redeeming the Ambrose name. I don't like my chances, but I have to try. And I need help. Your help. I didn't want to go anywhere near Gorgon. Once I exhausted all my options, the search led me back here. I even had Mother declared legally dead. Would you believe it took five years to process the paperwork? Allow me to explain. Mother's body is still on Gorgon. No body means no death certificate, which means no inheritance. I killed Mother, just on paper, of course, so I could claim my inheritance. We wouldn't be standing here if I didn't have access to the family fortune. I once assumed the mansion and the money would be enough to redeem the Ambrose name. But even in Byzantium, prestige must be earned. And it can so easily be lost. Break back into high society, yes. I'm trying to do several things at once. None of them easy. The sneer campaign against Mother was the work of cowards. I'm vindicating the family name for her, for the colony, and for my future.
my future as the head of the Ambrose family business, where I can wield my fortune like a cudgel. This colony is in trouble. The lunatics at Spacer's Choice are running the asylum, and we need better people to wield their influence. After Gorgon, I quickly discovered that the Ambrose name was... cursed, for lack of a better term. I had no place among the decision makers. No seat at the table. That is why I'm clearing the record and vindicating the Ambrose line. For Mother. For me. And for the generations who will one day inherit Halcyon. I know it will. You know as much as I do, I'm afraid. Spacer's Choice abandoned Gorgon, but the asteroid is far from unoccupied. Between the marauders, the wildlife, and whatever escaped the labs, danger abounds. I'm not even sure how marauders arrived on Gorgon, but the place is absolutely crawling with them. Just watch yourself. If you aren't careful, you stand to lose more than an arm. I believe that covers it all. Are you ready to get started? We mustn't allow the trail to get cold. I admire your enthusiasm. This manner has echoed with my own we, and I can feel you breathing new life into the walls. When you reach Gorgon, pack a weapon you trust. The corporate lockdown hasn't stopped the wilderness from squirming in through the cracks. I've never understood why, but Gorgon is teeming with marauders. They almost seem drawn to sorrow and misfortune. Then there's the test subjects, those who survived anyway. Ravenous creatures left behind like so much salvage. I told him everything I've told you. Just the facts. Maybe a couple of harmless embellishments. Why? Still, you're smart to ask. Lucky spent most of our time together spinning a pistol around his index finger. Not sure you listen to any of my advice. But you won't let me down, will you, Captain? That's the spirit. There's a little saloon near Gorgon's landing pad. The Sprat Shack. Lucky was renting a room, so if you want to follow his trail, that would be the place to start. Oh, you think maybe they got a little mascot? Like a Sprat and a tiny hat? Just so we understand each other, money is no object. I'm willing to squander the family fortune if you get me what I want. Between your payment and any salvage you happen across, you'll walk away from this rich enough to buy a mansion of your own. How does that sound? A consummate professional? That shouldn't be a problem. Here's your nav key, Captain. Safe travels. A word of advice before you go, Captain. Trust no one. Mother's office is in the heart of the Gorgon facility. You're free to salvage anything that isn't nailed down. I only want what's mine. Mysterious heiress, unexpected gainful employment. It's like something out of a detective serial. Don't worry about us. We're well versed in helping ourselves to anything that's not nailed down. How do you do? Regrettable, I know. We used to have a staff to maintain the grounds. Not just auto-mechanicals, either. Real people doing real work. Hideous, isn't it? I've been meaning to have that thing removed. Maybe jettisoned into the sun. Spacer's Choice agreed to double Mother's research budget if she subjected her family to product placement. I swear, those eyes follow me wherever I go. 
It's hard to find good help. And I'm not quick to trust anyone who'd work for me. Present company excluded. I can worry about upkeep once my family name is restored. Until then, this manor is a base of operations. Very well. If there's anything else, you have my attention. Ask anything you like, Captain. It's nice to have a competent partner for a change. I've told you everything I know. I trust you to investigate Gorgon and draw your own conclusions. If you can think of anything specific, all you have to do is ask. Of course, my dear Captain. I look forward to it. The Ambrose family comes from old Earth money. We were pioneers, inventors, and chimerists. Always at the top of our field, never lagging behind. If there's anything else you'd like to know, speak on. If Mother and I shared anything, it was our love of chemistry. Chemistry is a desire to understand matter, the very foundation of our existence. What Ambrose could ignore such a tempting lure? Yes? Be sure and close the door on your way out. I feel a draft. I find myself marveling at the complex simplicity of the Fibonacci spiral. I'm sure you know what that's like. Something vexing you, Captain? Perhaps it's just my judicious nature, but I think we should be careful if we're following up on this lucky fellow's message. I've always felt caution as the best approach when one has delivered a message attached to a severed limb. He sounded lost, perhaps slightly untethered from reality. A feeling I know all too well. It doesn't strike me as a setup, but I still advise caution. Why not? It is what we do, isn't it? As always, I am at your disposal. Something vexing you, Captain? Something you need? I hope we can help Miss Minnie uncover what happened to her mother. I wouldn't wish the pain of not knowing on hardly anyone. Not a word. And I've been sticking my nose in every one of our stately ladies' crannies, stem to stern. Oh, law, that sounds untoward, don't it? Uh, that ain't, uh, that ain't what I meant. Point is, Captain, Mr. Hawthorne left all kinds of scribblings behind panels and under consoles, but ain't a lick of it mentioned Mr. Lucky. So whatever they got up to in the past must have been really extra secret. And lots of fun. I don't want to be mean, Captain, but I can't help wondering if Miss Minnie is telling us the whole story about Gorgon. Her mother worked there for years and years, and she doesn't know hardly the first thing about it? it seems fishy. And in the serials, mystery's always got a twist. Well, Virginia Yang, that girl detective, she'd say to check your theories at the door. Just look at the facts and follow the clues. Me? I just want to fix what's been broke. Alrighty. You change your mind, you just holler. Yeah? I, I mean, what do you need? Captain? Mister? Sir?
Okay, keep him quiet. Oh my law, this is just like that episode of Virginia Yang, Girl Detective, where the old fella dies and his nurse inherits his house. <gasps> what if we find a body? Secret tunnel. Interesting architectural choice.
Dear Wilhelmina, I hope this letter finds you well. No, it's too stilted. It sounds like I'm writing to request a loan. Dearest Wilhelmina, I regret to tell you. Law, no, that's worse. When have I ever called her dearest? <sighs> She's my daughter. This should be easy. How can a mother not know how to talk to her own daughter? My love, I can no longer... For your safety, I must... Oh, hell. Even if she despises me for what I... What I had to do, I should still be able to say goodbye. Minnie, I have to leave, and I don't intend to come back. I love you. I'm so sorry. Forgive the mess. I'm still unpacking, and everything's covered in dust. Someone's been snooping around. Not that I mind. It reminds me why I hired you in the first place. For your keen eyes and scandalous disregard for privacy. When I left home, I wanted mother and father to know the conditions of my return. I would stroll through the entrance with my head held high, or not at all. I left this place with every intention of returning once the time was right. When I arrived, I was the toast of the town. All fought for the honor of lighting my cigarettes. The attention was sublime. I opened a small firm to help young, impressionable heirs manage their family wealth. Business was good. For a while. Gorgon happened. With Mother's downfall, so too fell my influence in society. I sold the business at a loss. Then I hatched a plan to restore the family name. That plan, as you're now well aware, is still in motion. Yes, that wasn't part of the plan. Fall of Gorgon accelerated my schedule. I thought I would find success in Byzantium. Instead, I must look for redemption back where I began. Here, in these vacant halls. You reminded me of better times. I should be thanking you. The pleasure is mine.
This music expresses dismay. <laughs> Service request processed. Disposal of human arm from the unreliable's cargo hold will commence in the immediate future. 